so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our, um, can everyone hear me by the way? I'm sure everyone hears me. Okay, good. <laughs> so uh, just thank you for joining us this morning. And I, we have here Dawn um, Revy and uh, she's a law enforcement strategist and coach. Uh, she'll be presenting and discussing uh, the secrets to gaining influence and creating buy-in. Um, so I just want to make sure that everyone has uh, muted themselves. Uh, that way we don't hear any background noise before we get started. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, please use, feel free to um, use the Q&A on the bottom. Um, and if uh, Don needs uh, any answers from you, please go ahead and um, use the chat on the bottom as well. So um, I'll just hand it over to Don here. Go ahead. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So I'm excited to be here with you guys, as you have heard with some of the entry of all of this. I see Diana and Terry and Shirley and all you folks here um, who have come to a place to learn about how to create buy-in. So that makes me think that buy-in might be a challenge for you at your department, right? So this is going to be a very interactive session. You're not alone. Buy-in is something that I teach uh, throughout the entire country right now because it is really a challenging topic. But we have lots of good tools for you to implement today that are going to be uh, very effective and very um, uh, moving you toward that goal of creating buy-in and knowing that you're of amazing value, right? Sometimes it's hard to know about the work that we do. It's hard to understand that um, what we do is of value because we don't often hear, right? We don't often hear and get that feedback. So I'm excited to share some ways with you today, um, 10 key action steps that you can take to really bring you and build you into that buy-in um, capacity. Can you explain to everyone the difference between sending a chat to all panelists? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so mm -hmm. thanks Diana for that. So this is a Zoom platform, so it's a little different than some of the webinar platforms. And so the raise the hand option is probably not the option you wanna use today. You're gonna wanna use the chat because I have the chat right here so I can see what everyone is, is chatting about. And there's two ways to use the chat. One, you can send to all panelists, right? Um, and that means I get to see it and everyone else gets to see it. Or you can click the little arrow where it says all panelists, right, right on your screen in the chat. Um, you can click that little drop down menu and you can select out who you want it to send it to. So if you want to send something to me privately that you want discussed, but you don't want everyone to know that it came from you, that's okay. We can do that. I'll know that it's, I, I'll know that it's privately sent from you. And we can discuss it. Um, and and then if you you know if you respond to somebody like let's say Diana just posted and you responded, it would only go to Diana, so I wouldn't see it. So just make sure if you want everyone to see it, you've checked where it says all panelists before you type in the message where it says type message here. Um, and if you only want me to see it, I think it says um, I think it says Don Reby. Maybe maybe let's see. Um, no. No, I don't think it does. So it might say it on your end. Diana, let me know what it says on your end. If it says Don Reby or if it says host or something like that or, or panelist, let me know what it says on your end so we know exactly how everyone can, can chat. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna chat, we're gonna have a real conversation um, about how you can really build buy-in. This is something that we as analysts don't talk enough about. Um, it, sometimes it might feel like, you know, there's something wrong with what we're doing. And I'm here to debunk all of that for you and give you real action steps that are going to push you forward. So with that, this is completely interactive. For those of you like Diana and some of you other folks who've taken training with me before, you know that I love the interaction piece because it means that you're learning and I'm learning too. And I really like that component. So Diana says we have the option for all panelists, um, for, for me, for Don Reby, and for Dana, um, all panelists and attendees, which is everyone. Okay, perfect, perfect. And she just sent this to all panelists, so you should have received that as well. All right, so hopefully that's clear. So there is, let's see, there are 33 people in this chat, uh, in this group right now, in this Zoom. Thank you all for being here today. I've heard from probably about 10 or 12 of you so far. I wanna hear from all 33 of you. I wanna make sure that you know how to use the chat. So go ahead, I'm from the Northeast, right? So we don't have sunny Cali over here. So go ahead and type in something about California <laughs> that's gonna to get to me to know you a little bit better. Whether it's the sunshine you like, the roller skating, whatever it is about California that you, it's smoke. it is smoky, isn't it? Okay. 
<laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll, per, we'll point out the, the positive today. I know it's, it's, it's smoky. It's a little sad for some of you folks. And, and we are praying for you over here. Um, Huntington beach, sunshine and beautiful ocean. You see clouds, no smoke. Finally. Oh gosh. Oh, that's good. Um, it was a non-smoking state. Is it actually a non-smoking state? Is that, is that a real thing? California is a non-smoking state. Mm. <laughs> that's pretty cool if it is. That's pretty cool if it is. I've, it's I've, always, it's always, there's always some kind of fire. So I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, I know you guys are suffering with some smoke out there. I, I, I actually talked to a couple people this week from California who are struggling with some of the fires and they're, they're losing their homes. And so this is a scary time for you. And I know creating buy-in sometimes isn't the top thing to be thinking about. Maybe something to be thinking about is saving your home, right? Um, or your friends or your family. And so I get it. There's bigger things going on right now um, that sometimes makes, you know, this, this law enforcement piece a challenge. But we're going to get focused. We're going to get centered. We're going to get you real strong and moving in the right direction today. Alex Morgan, nice. I'm, I'm glad you're here from San Diego. Nice to see you here. Who else is here? I know that there's more than a couple dozen of you. Let's see. Good morning from Visalia. Is that how you say it, Jessica? Visalia? I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Beautiful Laguna Beach. The Valley. It's going to be 96 degrees. Oh my God, that's death. That's death. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Mesa, Mesa PD. All right. La Mesa. I like it. I like it. Um, Anaheim, maybe? Is that how we say that? Ashley. Oh, Ashley Hood, you are here. Good to see you. Uh, Lucy, uh, uh, Miss Garibay, I see you. I see you. Is it Lucia? Because I think I have you under Lucy. Is it Lucia? So if it's Lucia, right, because I'm Italian. So Lucia is an Italian name and we have family members named Lucia. But you might be Americanized and it might be Lucia. So either way, it works for me. Um, foster only 100. Oh, my Lord, 190. <laughs> okay, 70 degrees here. It is the best day ever. We have foliage happening where the trees are turning colors. It's really quite remarkable out here. Yes, it's not Italian. Lucy, yes, I was gonna say, I usually call you Lucy, but if you prefer Lucy, <laughs> all right. 122, is that even a real thing? 122 degrees? It was 122 um, here in the valley. I, that's where I live. Um, oh yeah, it was around that, like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> oh my Lord. Is that, is it like a, is it like, it can't be very humid. I mean, is that like a good thing? I, I, I feel like I'd be no. cooking. <laughs> <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> I, I, I dry my herbs at 120 degrees. What the heck? <laughs> this is pretty wild. So we have some fun stuff for you today. Uh, many analysts do struggle with the challenge of creating buy-in and that data-driven culture at their police departments, right? And so that's what we're really talking about here is key things that we can do, key things that we, one, know that we're doing the right thing, and two, that we can continue to do or introduce into our schedules to really create the buy-in that we so truly need in order to best serve our police departments, okay? So whether you are from an agency that has one analyst or 100 analysts, whether you're super new to law enforcement analysis or you've been around for 20 years, buy-in is a challenge for everybody. You know, we've I started my career in the 90s, and at the time, uh, uh, thankfully, I was at a very progressive police department near Boston, where the chief was extremely data-driven, strategy-focused. But it's not like that everywhere, right? And so over the course of 20 years, this field has just emerged, right? It's really emerged, and, and many more people are interested in um, um, using data to drive their decisions, right? In the private sector and now in the public sector. But for some of you, it, you might still be stuck. Your agencies might still be stuck on, you know, the professionalism of an analyst, right? And how to really tap into their superpowers and use them for the purposes that they need uh, to, to be used, right? Is that any of you? What, what, what is that? Does that resonate with any of you? Are you all like, my agency doesn't, value me, my agency doesn't know me very well. Um, if I saw an officer, I wouldn't even know him or her and she wouldn't know me. Um, do you feel like your reports are never even looked at, right? Um, or is that not you? Do you have great buy-in at your agency? All right, let me know. Let me know how, how you are and, and what that's all about for you. Okay, I think I'm just gonna move this chat a little bit over. All right. 
96 in LA. Oh gosh, goodness gracious. Okay. So here we go. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dawn Reby. Um, let's see, I've only been at my agency for nine months and you're reinventing the focus of crime analysis. Yeah, exactly. We're actually going to talk a lot about vision and focus. And Diana, you're going to know where I'm going with this, this vision and focus and really creating a vision of what you want for an analytical unit, being proactive instead of reactive, reactive to data requests, reactive to you know statistical requests, reactive to your information. And instead, be proactive and provide your officers with opportunities for success, opportunities to create action and for success, right? So for those of you who, who don't know me, um, I, we haven't had the pleasure of connecting quite yet. I'm Don Reby. Uh, I own Excellence in Analytics. I'm the CEO of Excellence in Analytics, and you're the CEO of Crime Analysis, which we'll get into in a little bit. And, you know, for the, I've been in law enforcement since the 90s, thankfully, under a great commissioner. I left for a while, did some state level work in financial development. And then I came back to the state of New Hampshire as the very first analyst in, um, in the state. And so my role was to implement and create buy-in in the state of New Hampshire, well, starting with my city, but then in the state of New Hampshire. And so um, Massachusetts and New Hampshire border each other. So I came from Massachusetts, a community who re that really accepted analytics and then went to New Hampshire 10 miles away to a community who was like, what? Live free or die? Where's your gun? That kind of philosophy, right? And so it took a little while um, and we worked hard, hard to really build it up there. Um, I also, for the last probably eight or nine or maybe even 10 years at this point, uh, I, so I'm no longer with a police department for the last five years. I've simply been running the business. Um, but for the last eight to 10 years, I've been working with government entities such as IATALYST, um, IACP, BJA, um, IACA, and other, well, although they're not federal, but you get the idea, other groups traveling throughout the country to help law enforcement agencies build their analytical capacity, right? So we travel all over, we teach supervisors um, how to really corral analysts, right? And, and police agencies. We teach analysts how to perform the work, how to automate, how to strategize, how to create efficiencies. We teach chiefs how to have that top-down approach um, from a certain perspective and be able to really want, desire, and need law enforcement analytics. And then we also teach our officers, you know, how to really thrive in a data-driven strategy um, environment and a data-driven environment, right? So I'm thankful for all of it. I've had the pleasure, Fullerton, that's where I was, Fullerton. I knew it would come to me. I don't know where Fullerton is in California, but I was in Fullerton, California, wherever the heck that is, <laughs> doing that training. <laughs> Karina's like, what? She totally went back and forth. That's like in Orange County. That's like right below LA County. So yes, it's, not too far. it's like about a couple hours from here. Yeah, I knew there was an that. orange. <laughs> I told you there was an orange involved. <laughs> Orange County. <laughs> okay, it borders. Oh, all right, Ashley, it borders you. Yeah. Huh? All right, great. And so, uh, so you know, it's been a pleasure really going throughout the country and, and now a lot virtually, right? For those of you, you might be taking some courses that, that we're working on right now that are virtual, but it's been a pleasure getting to know, you know, what chiefs are thinking how to promote this buy-in piece, um, you know, really how to better support the analytical functions at police agencies overall. And I hear the same thing from analysts over and over again. I've probably dealt with a couple hundred analysts. I say a hundred, but it pro easily could be 200 analysts this month, uh, not, this, not this month, this year, <laughs> uh, helping them build that buy-in. And I hear the same thing. You know, I don't know if what I'm doing is good enough. I don't know if what I'm doing is of any value. I don't know um, if they're using what I'm giving them to use and I don't know what they want. There's this kind of lack of communication. So um, so when when Dana asked me to do this, I was, uh, I was very excited to do it because I feel like there's been a lot of opportunities in my career where we've seen this models, these best practices be effective and why not share it with everybody and let us all know what to do so that we can be effective and efficient too. Some of you may have seen, we also did a mastermind funded through NHTSA where um, it was 10 months or, or maybe nine months worth of um, panelist kind of meetings, like these national sessions where probably 300 analysts came to. And one of them, we collected a bunch of chiefs from 
throughout the country. And we said, you know, what do you want from your analysts? How can they create buy-in? And they gave some very clear and specific examples. I'm going to share those those with you here as well. All right. So I got to interview each of them, which was really fun. And, um, and so some of the content made it to the actual mastermind itself and some of it did not, but I have all this, all of them, whether they made it to the mastermind or not here with me today to deliver to you. So it's going to be fun. All right. Okay. So we're going to ask some questions for you. Hopefully uh, you all see this. Okay. Um, uh, Corina, can you see this? Okay. With a little guy going like this. All right. Good. So in the chat over here, I, I want you to let me know, you know, what, um, you know, what, what are you feeling? Do you feel like your products are not enough, right? Are not good enough. And in the chat, I want to hear you. I want to know you so that I know what area to focus on with this particular group. Okay. Do you feel unsure if your products are being used, right? Do you, feel like your agency doesn't value you necessarily, right? Is this anyone here? Do you feel like others don't even know what you're capable of? Do you feel like you don't even know what you're capable of? <laughs> Do you feel like, you know, you don't know um, how to really make everybody happy, right? You're trying to make everybody happy and you just don't know what's going to make them happy. Um, Elvia says, yes, yes. Okay, great. Are you feeling like you're the last person who ever knows everything, who knows anything, right? Are you feeling like you're the, always the last person to know what's going on, right? Do you feel like your efforts are duplicated, right? Maybe you work with some other analysts or maybe some detectives are kind of doing the same work as you're doing, right? And you're just like, oh my gosh, I just did that. Why didn't they listen to me? Abigail says it almost... Uh, let me just pull this down a little bit so I can read these that are coming in. Keep them coming. I promise I'll get to you. Abigail says it's it's almost pulling teeth to get them to review and approve even before disseminating your bulletins. And that's stressful because now th are things timely, right? And, that, and that's the part that you're probably challenged with, Abigail. You've done all this work and you're like, come on, read it so I can kick it out. Um, Denise says, um, I feel like people don't always know or trust what I'm capable of. Oof, that's a hard word, trust. They don't know or trust what I'm capable of. And although I feel like I have a voice, I don't always feel heard. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. That's a really hard feeling to have. Um, Aurora says, um, others don't know what we're capable of and we don't have a voice right? We don't have a voice. So you're kind of like the, the keepers of all this information and nobody's really listening to you. And that's, that's a sad feeling, right? We're going to shift some of this for you today. Jessica says, I'm almost hundred percent reactive with little or no time for being proactive. Jessica, I feel you. I feel you. That's the number one thing that, that I hear from analysts is that time, time management. They're, they're just like, I'm so overworked. I get so many requests. Um, you know, I, I don't have any time to do anything proactive. Um, and so they live in this reactive world and eventually it, re it leads to stre being stressed out, right? And you just want to like, you know, kick things on the way home. <laughs> Maybe you do. Maybe you kick things on the way home. <laughs> Um, do you feel like you don't have your voice heard in your agency? What are the rest of you feeling? How does this, how, how is it for you? Have you established great buy-in strategies or are you feeling like, um, you know, this, it's real stressful for you. It sounds like you're like every, you're probably like 80% of the other analysts throughout the country or throughout the world, really, who feel the same way. Shirley says, unsure if some products are used because I'm not sworn. I may be the last to know when they're asking me if I'm aware of some situations and I don't have a voice with some staff members. Yeah. So Shirley, you bring up a couple of good points. You bring out the first, uh, am I producing products that are even of value? right? And then the sworn versus non-sworn piece, right? So is it because I'm sworn? Is it because I'm an analyst or not sworn rather? Is it because I'm an analyst? Why is it that I don't have a voice with some staff members? Do they consider me less than, you know? Um, we have a, a group going on right now who's going through a time management series over in our, our Facebook group. And that's exactly what one of, uh, one of the managers said, you know, that, that they're not sure uh, if they're even being heard. Right? They're not sure if they're being heard, that they feel like they're always putting out fires, um, that it's pretty stressful. Yeah. 
So you're not alone. You're not alone. Um, they feel like, you know, they're an outsider. Uh, maybe you came from another agency or maybe you kind of came up the ranks and people knew you when you were just a wee, wee little person, right? Maybe you're brand new to your agency uh, under a year and they don't trust you yet. I remember at my police department in Nashua, remember uh, New Hampshire, the, the first analyst in the state, I, I walked in and on my very first day, <laughs> the, I, they placed me in the Narcotics Bureau, Bureau right? And so on my very first day, the narcotics captain brought me into his office and he sat me down and he looked me dead in my eye and it was scary. He had a suit on, like he had, he was all suited up and he had a vest on and he was like, mm. and he said, um, I don't trust you. And I said, okay. <laughs> and I said, well then, all right. And he's like, it, uh, trust, trust is earned. And he said, you're gonna have to earn my trust. And I said, all right. By the time I was done with him, I had earned it his earned it. I had earned his trust, and I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you how. Um, Carrie says my agency is stuck on how we have always done it and haven't figured out how the analysts will fit in. That is such a thing that we experience. We're stuck on you know we've always done things this way, right? We've always saturated the downtown area because we know what our problems are. Who are you to tell us what our problems are, right? I've heard that one before. We have some solutions for you, for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Carrie, how big is your agency? Are you um, the only analyst? How many sworn do you have? That would be helpful if, to know that. Ashley, yes, not sure if all products are being used, but we're gonna create a, a feedback process. Yeah, Ashley, exactly, a feedback process. And so we're gonna get into you know, how to create that feedback process, how to professionalize yourself, how to be the CEO of crime analysis at your agency and really have that mindset. I am the CEO of crime analysis, right? So, um, so Daniel, the younger generation of officers that think they know everything and enough are afraid to ask for help. Yes, uh, the old generation too sometimes, right? You know, you're afraid to ask for help because you're supposed to know everything, right? That kind of thing. So you have a single analyst in 80 sworn. Yeah, so they're like, who the heck is Carrie? Who the heck is Carrie to tell us what to do? We know where our crimes are. You're small enough, probably where they know where their crimes are, right? They know, I'll, I'll debunk that too. But I get it, Carrie. We're going to help support you today. Okay. Abigail says, I think some of the older staff who usually have commanding positions do not fully understand what analysts can do. So trying to get that across can be hard to sum off um, uh, with, with closed off minds. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so sometimes analysts don't even know what they do, right? <laughs> Let's face it. Some analysts are just like, I just want to make everyone happy. And you just do everything that they tell you to do. And when you come to something like this, you discover the power that you actually have in your hands and how you can lead from, from the data-driven perspective. Yeah, exactly. Michael says, we are transitioning from an admin analyst to more of a hybrid admin Intel analyst. Well, phew, thank goodness, right? So being able to automate as many administrative tasks as possible so you can actually dig in to the analytical portion of things is a lot more fun, <laughs> quite honestly, than just spitting out a bunch of statistics, don't you think? Um, Michael, are you the analyst or are you the supervisor who is making this transformation happen or transition happen? Right. So everyone has a different story. And so what we're doing here today is we're painting a new story, right? We're painting a new story of what you want your vision of crime analysis to be and how to actually get there. So uh, Michael says we are transitioning from, uh, oh, I already got that one. Did another one pop up? Oops, there we go. Sorry about that. Oh, we are a team of two analysts. Got it, got it, yeah. So how many, how many sworn do you folks have, Michael, where you need someone full-time as an admin analyst? That, that, that's, do we have like 500 or so people? How many sworn do you have? Oh gosh, 115. Yeah, so you, you and two analysts, well, kudos to you. Congratulations, you have so much opportunity. So I, when I went to Nashua, we had 179 sworn officers and me, one analyst. And I, my role was all of it. Admin, intel, narcotics, drugs, um, prostitution, um, tactical, strategic, comstat, like everything. We didn't have a real comstat, but everything, right? And so you have opportunities. Oof, I can't wait, I can't wait. I can't wait to share some of this with you. I'm excited. 
So one of the first things you can do, one of the first things you can do is to build advocates within your agency. So this whole idea of trust, this whole idea of trust and building those relationships is, is key. Chiefs don't know what they don't know, right? Uh, and so there's a couple of things that I wanna talk about here that I think are really important. One of the things in that mastermind that I shared with you a few minutes ago that the chiefs really said, they're like, we don't know what we're supposed to know. We rely on our analysts to tell us what we should know. But then on the other end of it, the analysts are kind of like, should I say this? Should I say that? Right. And so the chiefs want you to say, chief, if you want to be a data driven strategy agency, right, here's what we have to do. You are the expert. You are the closest thing they have to perfection at your agency. Okay. You are the data driven strategies expert at your agency. And, and so putting that hat on and saying that to yourself every day is going to shift how you work some of what you do, all right? So chiefs don't know what they don't know. And so building multiple advocates will really help um, build that trust and build that relationship. So analysts are sitting on information, right? So we are sitting on all this data and we have the opportunity to share that data um, in a way that's impactful, right? And if they have always done something a certain way, let's say, numbers, like let's say they've always done numbers and they've always said, how many burglaries do we have? How many this do we have? You as the analyst can walk in and say, chief, you can say this, right? You can say, chief, I have a new idea. So I understand your goal is to reduce crime. Giving these numbers to you is not necessarily reducing crime. However, performing analytics on the burglaries, that's going to reduce the crime right? Giving opportunities for success for our officers, identifying patterns and series, identifying potential suspects, that's going to give you um, what you're looking for. And so here's what we need to do to work together, right? So when your chief has buy-in, right, when he or she is your advocate, um, that's a really good thing. You can find um, advocates in other ways too. And I'm going to share with you a story of Jen who did, who, who found her advocate, um, you want to find those one or two or three or 10 people in your agency who really understand data-driven strategies. And you want to give them success after success after success, right? You want them to be your voice who goes out and says, Karina is amazing. Do you see what she did for me? That's what you want to have happen. There's only so much that Karina can do, right? Karina can say, hey guys, I'm amazing. Here's what I do. But when someone else says it, when a detective says, Karina helped me close that case, she's flipping amazing. Here's what she did for me. She did all this analysis and gave me a bunch of suspects. Then you got them hooked, okay? And you build your advocacy. So think about it. I want you to think about one person right now in your agency who really likes you. <laughs> Think about one person right now, everyone. And I want you to write down, it could be, it, it doesn't have to be your supervisor. It could be your supervisor. It doesn't have to be. It could be peer level, right? If you're um, an analyst, um, it could be someone kind of like an officer, like peer level. Although I would advocate that I would, it, I would argue that you're uh, probably a higher level, hopefully than, than an officer. Um, it could be, you know, a detective who you really got along with. Um, it could be someone that you helped in an investigation. I want you to name one person here. You don't have to, if, you, if you're uncomfortable giving their actual name, then give their, um, give their initials, right? So Don Reby, give DR, right? Identify someone right now who you could go back to and you could ask them, how did I help you? And, and, and can you talk me up a little bit, right? Can you talk me up a little bit? So go ahead and do that in the chat. I want to make sure that everyone here has at least one person. Um, and if you are saying to yourself, I've never helped anyone, then let's refocus. Let's refocus and let's get you some success stories. Okay. You want to get those success stories. JM and NO says Holly. Great. Sylvia says Elvia. Awesome. What about the rest of you? What about the rest of you? Who can be your advocate? JS. Um, so one of the recommendations, and I'm going to keep on looking at these, so pump them in there. Julie got hers in there. Pump them in there. Um, who's yours, Karina? I'm dying to know. I'm dying to know. A sergeant from uh, narcotics. What's that? Detective. Uh, I'll just say AG for his initials. <laughs> AG. AG, yeah. that one detective. Exactly. Narcotics sergeant for Daniel. Aurora says KG. Um, Michael says a homicide detective that you've really helped. 
create success stories, find opportunities to create success for other people, right? So where I was in narcotics, I was not trusted by the Mac guys when I first got there. Um, and so there was this one detective who was a little bit younger, who understood data-driven strategies, but he was still kind of weary because he didn't want to be like the guy who approached the new analyst, right? So I found opportunities to um, help my detectives, even if they didn't ask. All right, so write that down if you're taking notes, help people even if they didn't ask. If you see that you, you know, your detective is working a case, ask yourself, how can I assist? What can I do? If, if they're working a burglary series, who, what suspects can I offer up to them, right? How can I you know, assist them? So Carrie says a couple of the detectives, Lucy says a detective lieutenant, um, let's see, Abigail, a sergeant from your detention classification unit, Shirley says a detect detective LG, we only have one, so you help them clear and organize cases, yes, and let's talk about that, let's talk about that, you wear many hats, so time is very valuable, of course it is, of course it is, right, so one of the key things that a chief recommended is find your advocate, and once you have one, find your advocates, right? Um, decide how you're going to help somebody. And it might be doing a write-up for that detective who didn't ask for it. So, you know, we're going to talk about how to position yourself so that you're actually sitting in front of people that you can help, right? Um, you know, um, I, I will tell you, there was a chief, Chief Arnold, I'm looking at my stories here, Chief Arnold, when he was an officer, he, <laughs> he used to write memos to his commanders. He was an officer who you know, had no standing to do this. And he used to write an, a, a memos to his commanders about ideas that he had when he was a patrolman about how he could make some improvements, right? And nobody ever listened to them, but he was consistent about it. And he sent these memos. And when he rose in the ranks, they were like, you helped us so much. We took your ideas. We just didn't tell you because you were patrol staff, right? <laughs> and so, you know, he has a great story about how he created buy-in um, by just you know, um, creating opportunities for success for other people. Sally says a special agent NB with our assigned task force. It sounds like you really care and that person has been helpful for you as well. So you wanna find somebody, okay? If, you, if, you, if you're thinking, if there's 39 of you here right now, if, if half of you are saying to yourself, I sit in the chief's office and I never really offer that big value that you're talking about, or I don't, I don't know if I do, I don't feel it, right? I encourage you as you're taking your notes to, to really think, you know, what's one thing I can do to offer value? So let me tell you the story about, about um, my detective, Detective Osler, right? So the younger detective, um, I knew um, he, he was assigned to a, a burglary unit, right? So we had quite a bit of burglaries for the size of our agency. And I had built out this master analytical system, right? I had access to all my data and I was reading my reports every day and typing in my little storylines. And, um, and he ended up getting served up a bunch of burglaries. Now, I don't know if it's true for you, but in my agency, <laughs> our officers did not always put down the correct IBR codes, right? Or the correct crime codes. So things that were burglaries sometimes were listed as malicious damage if nothing was stolen. And I'm like, oh, it's still a burglary, right? And do you guys face that at your agency? Does that happen with you? A little bit, right? So I knew that there were certain reports as well as FI reports, field interrogation reports that that detective could use. And so I kind of like pushed information out to him. I'm like, hey, I know you work in these burglaries. Did you notice that Johnny was in the area where some of your burglaries had taken place? And I would just kick it out. It's little, little emails, little kicking out. So all of a sudden one day, Detective Osler comes to me and he's like, Dawn, I have a kid who's sitting in a room. I know that he's responsible for these you know, six cases or however many there were. And he's like, is based on MO, I know you have your little data stuff there. He's like, based on MO, is there anything else you think he could be responsible for? And because I had already set up these data systems, I was able to just type in the MO and kick out a report in access that was automated and kick it out. And I said, hey, Dan, hey, Osler, I think that he's responsible um, for these other eight. So Detective Osler takes my little piece of paper and says, where were you here? Where were you on this date, on this date, on this date, and cleared a bunch of cases. So, so Detective Osler comes to me, he's like, we cleared a bunch of cases. This is great. It's great for his career. And you bet, you bet that I then highlighted him. And I, I heard other analysts doing this recently. So I really applaud you for that. 
um, that you highlight that analyst or I'm sorry, that detective or that officer in their successful use of of law enforcement analytics, right? So um, congratulations to, to Detective Osler who cleared 22 cases, um, you know, using um, the, the, the tools found in crime analysis, right? And so people get curious, well, what do you mean he cleared all those cases? What do you mean he used some tools? I wanna use those tools and people get excited, all right? So that's a really good one is to build advocates. It helps build the trust. It helps build those relationships. And that's exactly how I began to build that relationship with that narcotics detective as well, uh, the narcotics captain as well. The one who said in the beginning, I told you, he said, I don't trust you, right? He said, I, I don't trust you. And so, um, so I would kind of just say, how can I help him? How can I help him? Okay, well, I see that he's counting a bunch of things. Maybe I can set up a database for him or maybe I can, you know, help him somehow, right? Sure enough, I helped him a few times. So, so our detectives would lie, put out all of the pictures of, of folks when they were, when they were running a sting. They would put out all the pictures on this table and they'd have notes scribbled everywhere. And I was like, hey, Cap, I can do that electronically for you. <laughs> and so I did electronically. And sometimes it takes 10 minutes and sometimes it takes a little longer. So find opportunities where you can build advocates. You guys good with that one? You ready to move on to the next one? Okay. All right, so let me move this little chat out of the way here. So strategy number two, strategy number two is to continue to produce quality products that have an ends have conversations about their utility, right? So if you don't know what quality products are, um, you know, there's a couple different approaches that you can, you can take, right? So ask yourself, is this product actionable? Am I kicking out data to our patrol st staff officers who don't care about data? Or am I giving them something actionable? right? Um, you know, ask what the quality is of your data. Have a couple people test it out and see what it looks like, right? Say, is this of value to you? Go down to roll call. Is this of value to you? There was one analyst who was on the Elder po uh, Jason Elder podcast the other day, um, Mitri Lewis out in Florida. She's phenomenal out there. Um, and she she was on this podcast. She did major crimes. And, um, and she said she would do this report and she had no idea if anyone ever used it. So she stopped doing it and no one ever said anything. Two years later, someone's like, where's that report? And she's like, I have not been doing that for two years, right? <laughs> so to have you, has a, it was not valuable, right? Until, until that moment. So that was interesting. So one of the key things that you can do is to know your vision. What do you want your role to be? Have you ever asked yourself that? Have you ever asked yourself, what do I want my role to be in in, in my function? How do I want to serve, right? What do I want it to look like? What does it look like when I am serving, right? Am I producing tactical bulletins? Am I part of a tactical team? Um, am I sitting in narcotics, like, you know, in the grind? Am I attending detective meetings and helping them with cell phone analysis and, and clearing the bad, uh, clearing cases and catching the bad guys, right? What does it look like for you? Have you ever really imagined What's my vision of my unit, right? And I know there's a couple supervisors here too. Have you articulated your vision of your unit, right? Because when you become more solid with what you want for your agency, right? When you become more solid about what your vision is and stop relying on what other people may or may not be thinking, then that vision allows for those proper products and connections to come in a little bit more easily and for you to discover if they're actually working, right? So do you know your vision? Go ahead, and then in the chats right now, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about where am I going as an analyst in my agency? Where is my anal analysis going? So for those of you who are like, I don't even know, even know if I'm heard and, and saying some of those things, what's your vision, right? Um, do you want to be an integral component of your patrol vision, where a uh, unit rather, where you are at every roll call and they are looking at you saying, you know, Karina, what do we need to do today? Like, is that your vision? Is that your vision that you are providing these tactical analyses, right? Where, where people are, 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 are running to you saying, what, what can I do? What can I do? It, what's your vision? You guys are real quiet right now. Does that mean you haven't had that vision quite yet? Um, you know, identifying patterns and trends as they emerge, is that your vision, right? Is your vision, 
you know, that you want to be that critical component in investigative in investigations, right? Um, whoop, gosh, that always wants to update right in these presentations, right? So, um, you know, identifying investigative leads, right? You're still working on your, yours. You want to be critical. Yes, Carrie, you want to be critical. I love that word. I want to be critical to the investigations. I remember one time we were having a SWAT, invest, uh, a SWAT training and I was so excited because they finally asked me to be part of the SWAT investigation. And I was like, yes, they recognize that I'd be really wonderful in these emergency scenarios that I'd be able to identify the, the shooter, right? Um, I'd be able to identify the baby mama. I'd be able to do all the digging real, real fast. I'd be like Garcia on that, on that TV show, right? Criminal Minds. Yeah, I was so thankful that they, that, that they invited me to that SWAT training. And then I get to the SWAT training and I'm like, oh, do I need my laptop? Like, what do I need? And they're like, Don, you're the nurse who cheated on your husband and we're going to save you. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I want to be a critical component of the success here. <laughs> I want to be a critical component of the strategy that's implemented during this SWAT investigation, right? Is that you? And, and, and so I kicked myself because I had never relayed relayed that need before, that desire, that vision before. Let's see. Um, I know what my vision is, but I get pulled in so many directions. It's hard to keep sight of that sometimes. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, I knowing what your vision is and then relaying that vision to your team so that you're all on the same page, right? Um, and figuring out how you could work together to really supplement and really create that bigger vision. And that may mean some stuff comes off your plate. I'm working on a training right now for the IACA um, starting in January, where we are building out a 12-week program to help build infrastructure at police agencies, creating that vision, creating policies and procedures that matter, not the BS ones, <laughs> the ones that matter, creating infrastructure, creating buy-in, creating all these pieces. Um, so I get it. Not a lot of agencies have um, a vision, and if they do, it might be just from the analyst and, and, and not accepted by the rest of the agency. So that, that's an important piece of it for sure. Let's see, um, but I'm glad you're starting there, um, Denise. I'm glad you have a vision. So Ashley, we just created one and I delivered it to the chiefs. Your training through the Facebook has helped structure it. Oh, fantastic, Ashley. Yes, you did a great job. You and your team did a great job and I can't wait for, for um, the feedback on that. So that's awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so do you want to be developing uh, deployment strategies, right? So you can take the last, let's see, the last um, three years worth of data and identify, you know, what's happening in the fall, right? What, what typically happens in the fall and where we need to put our officers, right? Maybe you're doing hotspot analysis. Is that your vision? Is that your vision to be presenting this and saying, this is what we need to do, team? If you want to feel like a team member, what's your vision and how can you bring that vision? Ashley, Ashley, what advice do you have for the other folks here? How can they bring that vision to the chiefs? Who are the partners who have to be involved in that, in that development? Who are the partners involved in your development, Ashley? Ashley? All right. Once you've got that idea of creating that vision, um, who, who did you have to bring in, in? And so what she's talking about is over, many of you I can see here are already part of our Tribe of Excellence Facebook community. It is, it is a community of almost 700 analysts from throughout the world at this point. And, um, and we had this summer, we did a summer series on building infrastructure. And one of the key pieces was creating that vision. And Ashley and her team took that series and she like rocked, they, they rocked it. They just like went to town, they created it. They sent me some versions of it and we worked, you know, worked out, um, they did a ton of work and I was, I'm really excited to see how that goes for you. So um, that is free to everybody. You all can go on there and I'll show you the resources after at the very end of this, but yeah, there's some good resources and I'm so happy for you that you pushed through with that. Awesome. So um, are you committed, like what's your vision? Uh, are you committed to identifying uncommitted patrol time, right? Um, increasing um, contact with offenders, right? So being able to identify potential offenders, like what's, what's your vision? What is your role in your agency versus the reactive piece that you might be experiencing right now? Okay, so that's the piece here is knowing your vision. Um, 
you know, in, in, in taking a look at your products and seeing if they're in fact actionable products. The IACA has a contest every year. The International Association of, of Crime Analysts has a contest every year of the best bulletins, right? And then they post them on the IACA website so you can get an idea of what a, a phenomenal bulletin looks like. So if, if you are saying, I don't know if my products are, are working, um, you know, you can go there and take a peek and see if, if they're reflective of that. Okay. All right, great. Let's see. All right. So the next strategy here, we have learn to talk chief talk. This one came, <laughs> this one came directly from, um, from one of the chiefs who was on that. Well, I don't even know if he was on the mastermind. I actually had a private session with him. Ashley, we just created one and delivered it to the chiefs. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I already read that one. Sorry about that. It's popping up again. Okay. So learn to talk chief talk. Chiefs do not want to hear of all, and neither do any of the command staff. They don't want to hear the standard deviation and the statistical significance of X, Y. Like they want to hear, they want to get to the point. They want you to tell them what's important. They don't care your, about your methodology most of the time, right? What they care about is, are you the CEO of crime analysis and are you delivering them a result that they can work with, right? Ashley says, we got feedback from several other analysts, good, that we've um, met throughout the years. Okay, great. And so, so those were other analysts, not part of your agency, and uh, looks for their feedback to help structure it. We also had our lieutenant and other people's options, uh, uh, um, maybe opinions, other people's opinions we respected in the department. Our lieutenant, Captain DC and Chief. We're in um, uh, our meeting and it was great dialogue. Overall, full support, we are moving forward. Yes, yes. So what's important about what Ashley is saying is she had the original vision, but then she brought in the key players to have a discussion. And I think Diana and some of you other folks who are here, um, who are over on the tribe page, you, you guys are doing the same thing. You're first creating the vision within your own head. And then you're saying, all right, let's move forward. Let's see if everyone's on the same page. Let's get their buy-in, right? Right from the beginning. So talking, the third strategy, learning to talk, talk chief, talk. Learn how to talk about the beginning and then the end. <laughs> Stop talking about everything in between, all right? Learn how to talk about the beginning and the end, right? Chief, we're here. Um, we are reactive. We are, you know, um, we have um, all these series going on. Um, we have all these criminals who are returning to our community. Then the end. Here's the strategy, right? <laughs> Here's a strategy that I recommend based off the pop center research or based off of what's worked in the past, based off of whatever, right? And so what they don't wanna hear about is all the stuff that goes on in the middle, right? All the complaining, all the stuff that goes on in the middle. Um, they wanna hear results. So I ask you, are you results focused? Are you results focused? Or are you just trying to kick out a bulletin because you wanna kick out a bulletin? Or are you asking yourself, what are the results of the product that I'm pushing out, right? What are the intended results of the product that I'm pushing out, right? And if, you know, or, or the meeting that I'm going to or anything else, if you shift your mindset into that vision and shift your mindset into every single thing you do, having results, things are gonna start to shift, okay? For instance, if you're going to a meeting and you don't know why you're going there and it's fruitless and it always is, then and it doesn't have produce results, then question, question whether or not you have to be there. If you are doing a comp set report that's a hundred pages long, oh my gosh, I talked to an analyst two days ago who does a, a comp set that is 80 pages long. I'm like, are you crazy? What? How many of you do comp set here and it's 80 pages long? All right, let's just say that's psycho. That's crazy. Um, what's the value? What's the purpose? What are the results that you're trying to elicit from that? So Michelle says, unfortunately, oh, um, no problem, no problem. Yes, I think, um, I think, I think Karina said she's recording it. Okay, okay, good, beautiful. So learn to talk, chief talk. If um, if your chief's eyes are glazed over, <laughs> fix it. Don't talk technology. They don't care. Don't tell them that I'm I'm looking at Guessy today. Did you know that Excel has 3D maps right now? Uh, like they don't care. Just chief, these are the things I need to do my job effectively and efficiently. And this part, um, 
I, I, is, is an area to focus on because I feel like analysts will ask for a little bit here and a little bit there and be meek and humble about it and really like small about it. Your chief, and this is directly from the chiefs that I've talked to, your chief wants you to own crime analysis. They want you to be the expert. They want you to tell them what you need to be successful. So here's an example. Chief, may I have open database connection? Um, can I access my data because I'm inputting everything manually and it really takes a lot of time and you know, um, IT is not totally on board and the chief, I'll think about it, right? Versus, versus, Chief, um, I've been here for a couple months. Um, I've done an assessment and um, you know, um, here are the key things that I need to move forward with my job. One, I need uh, access to our data. Um, two, I need a raise. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that would be fun though if we said that. Um, but if you come across as a professional who is, is the CEO of the work that you're doing, that's what your chiefs want. They don't want like, can we do this? They want, here's based on my, Sub, I'm the subject matter expert, right? And so are you. Based on my experience and my expertise, this is what we need. This is what we need, Chief, in order for us to move forward, okay? So when, uh, one of the Chiefs actually suggested that, that analysts, this was an interesting one. He said, I'd like to make a recommendation to analysts. And I said, go for it. And he said, I, I wish that an analyst would read a book that I read, right? And learn how to think like I think. Chiefs think like CEOs. Chiefs think like leaders, right? They're not concerned with like the little tactical stuff, right? They are concerned with the bigger picture. One of the books that I love, 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 um, and this chief actually recommended it, and, and I think it was a great recommendation, is called Culture Code, right? And it's all about creating buy-in um, in industry. And so you can just transition it to police industry, right? And so the chief was saying, I want an analyst to, you know, be able to talk my talk, which is results, right? Which is results. How many of you feel like you already do this? This is just something you already know how to do. And, um, you know, and, and I'm kind of like speaking to the two or three people who don't know how to do this already, right? How many people know how to do this already? Go ahead in the chat. Let me know. Is this brand new to you? Or are you like, oh my gosh, there's another button that appeared. My internet connection is unstable. Um, so Assad is asking for an outline. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll send you this presentation in PDF forum, uh, Karina, so you can send it out to everyone afterwards. Okay. All right. Carrie says, I still struggle with being heard when I do. And, uh, Raquel says I've been doing this. So Raquel, how has that shifted things for you? Right? So when you're doing this, has this shifted things for you? Okay. All right. Again, they are still stuck in their old way. All right, well, hopefully some of these other strategies will work for you. So number four, nurture your traits, not just your skills. So this was a really interesting one for me because a lot of analysts will ask me, you know, because I teach automation strategies, I teach Microsoft Access, Excel, mapping, um, tactical analysis, all that stuff, right? And so a lot of analysts will say to me, Dawn, you know, what, um, what training should I be in, right? Um, I, I'm going to take a tactical training or I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to use Microsoft access or Excel or SQL SSRS or whatever, right? So they're going to, they're asking me what te technical training they should learn. And the chiefs actually said, I want these other traits from an analyst, right? Whether I'm hiring them or I'm keeping them, I, this is what I look for. So I'm going to read you I'm gonna read you, if that's okay with you, the traits that they said. You guys ready? All right, in the comments, let me know. Um, I am ready, I wanna hear the traits because these are the things I'm gonna work on. Let me know you're still here and with me. We've been going for an hour, so I know it can be a little wild and crazy. Okay, good. Ashley, Aurora, Julia, um, Jessica, you folks are ready. Okay. Abigail's ready, perfect. Diana's ready, beautiful. So the number one thing that they said is I want my analyst, <laughs> this is funny, um, to have natural curiosity and to be inquisitive. They are sick of coming up with ideas for you, <laughs> right? They want us as analysts to come up with new ideas, to be creative. And if you're stuck there, if you're like, I have no idea how to create more ideas, <laughs> right? Um, we have some resources for you at the end that we're going to share with you um, to help you get to that next level, okay? They said, have curiosity, natural curiosity, right? That was pretty cool. Be inquisitive. So if you're saying to yourself, what do I need to do in my world? 
are you inquisitive? Do you have natural curiosity, right? They said, be selfless, team oriented and have humility, right? Often analysts don't feel like they're part of the team because they're segregated, right? They might be in a little teeny office all by themselves and they never actually see anybody um, that they're doing work for, right? So they don't feel like a team. So the chief wants you to feel like a team. All the chiefs that I spoke to, um, there were probably a half a dozen of them at that point. They all said, I want them to feel like they're part of the team. And, you know, I mean, with, with us in mind, it's partly the chief's opportunity to, and responsibility to help, to help us feel that way, but it's also ours, right? So the good news is they want the same things we want, right? Um, they said, I want my analyst to be incredibly organized. So if you are an analyst right now who is incredibly organized, go ahead in the chat and let me know, I am organized. If you are constantly flailing and always disorganized and you're like, I can't even find a pen, if that is you, let me know too. Now, you can be organized and messy, that's okay. But if you are disorganized, if, if a chief says to you, hey, how many CAD calls have we had this year? And you have no flipping clue because this is not something that you are organized with, like, let me know that, let me know that. Um, Jessica's organized and, and but messy, that's okay. That still counts, Jessica, that's good. Um, Raquel's type A, yep, nice and organized. It's gonna be done right, we know it, yeah, yeah. What about the rest of you? So they were looking for this. They were also looking for analysts who are open to change, right? Open to change. They wanted analysts who constantly challenge their own processes, right? Is what I'm doing the best method? Think about that for a second. When's the last time you challenged your process? When's the last time you reached out to a group, a network, somebody else and said, hey, um, you know, is this process what you would be doing, right? Um, and uh, Chief said, decide what you want to do. Don't leave it to chance. Join a police agency. I love this one. I love this one. Join a police agency who fits your beliefs. But first, you have to know what you want. Start with clarity of your purpose. That was a chief. A chief was like, I'm so sick of getting all these resumes because they were hiring. They were so sick of getting all these resumes with people who really didn't know what they wanted. It was just someone who wanted a job in law enforcement analytics, right? And so the chief said, um, you know, I want you to think about what kind of police agency you want to join in on. Like, who, what do you, where do you want to, what do you want to be part of, right? I was working with an analyst who, you know, she wanted a job in policing and she's just like, I don't know anyone who will take me. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's get focused on what would be your good environment. How can we engineer a great environment for you? Um, organize. Shirley just made a binder for those frequently asked questions. Fantastic. I love it. Diana says, what do they mean by having humility? Sometimes having humility makes me think of that small mousy personality and just that I described earlier. I think, um, you know, I think what they were really talking about is all hands on deck, Diana. I think they were talking about that team piece. Um, I think they were talking about, you know, sometimes they need the analysts to just do something that may not be analytical. I'm not saying that we should do that all the time, but let's say there was like, um, you know, a big fire, right, in California, or let's say that there was a big emergency incident and they, they're like, hey, I need you to go run this over there. You know, they want someone that they can depend on no matter what, even if it's not the analytical thing. And I have to say, I have to preface that with, I don't mean all the time. I don't mean that um, you are their caddy. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying really someone they can depend on to be honest with them, to, to, to you know, be professional and really clear with them, that kind of thing. Oh, good. I'm glad that makes a little bit more sense. You're right. I should have clarified that. Thank you. Okay. So what's, what, what skills, after hearing all this, what skills do you want to start nurturing, right? What are you saying to yourself right now? Are you saying to yourself, I'm so organized, I got that down pat. Are you saying, um, I'm not very curious because I just wait for what people ask me to do. I don't really like go out there and seek it, right? Is that something that you're working on? What are you working on? What are you working on? All right. Okay. This is a big one and this is kind of tricky. So I'm gonna pretend we're not in COVID right now. Um, 
don't hide out in your office, right? Don't just plug away at numbers and send to the void of emails. <laughs> if you are guilty of this, Karina's like, oh, shizzle, she got me. <laughs> Get out of your office, okay? How many of you are guilty of this? How many of you, and, and, and trust me, the only analyst in an agency of almost 180 sworn, I was totally guilty of this because I had 50 reports that I had to read a day, never mind doing all the reports and everything else. I was busy, right? Um, and so I didn't set up relationships as a priority. Um, and that was a mistake. That was a big mistake. So how many of you hide in your office, right? How, you don't want people to disturb you. You just kind of like put your headphones on or block your door. Um, and you have zero time of connection with other people, right? Now I get that this is a balance, right? We're talking about, you know, you, you need quiet time. You need environments that are going to really be successful for you. But how many of you... How many of you um, have been to a roll call every single day when you were in the office? Are you in the office? That's a good question. Is anyone here in their office at this point in time? Raquel says, I did this at first, but I haven't for a while. You did what? You, you um, got out of the office or you, you stayed in the office? Which one, Raquel? Which one? How many of you are back in the office? If you are back in the office, just type in back in the office if, you, uh, if you're pretty much full capacity. Raquel says you're out of the office. Terry is back in the office. Um, met working from home. Some people never even left the office. Okay, so there's a bunch of you who are in the office one day a week. Sally's back in the office. Um, Elvia's back in the office. So there's a bunch of you who are in your office, right? At home, but our unit used to do quarterly rides. Oh, oh I love it, Abigail. I love it. Quarterly ride alongs. And I think that um, that's more accepted in the California area than it is in, in other parts of the country. I've seen um, so going to roll call, going to command staff meetings, going to community events, going to council meetings, and going to detective meetings. Um, did I mention roll call? Get your butt to roll call. I've heard analysts say, but I don't work the night shift. Who cares? Figure out a way at least once a week to get to a roll call at night so that those night guys and gals will use the products that you are delivering to them because they know you now, right? because they know you think about think about the commercials you see on TV thinking think about the things that that you've purchased in your life you know if, if if it's like if a friend refers you to it or if you see that person up front like you're more likely to be engaged and that's true for an officer too right getting to know your officers your sergeants helping them and not just sitting in the back of roll call but being an active member of roll call right sharing your bulletin how many of you do that right now those of you who are back in the office, how many of you are in your roll call meetings? Or on ride-alongs, right? Maybe over here in the Northeast, we're still very COVID quarantined. Like we're all wearing masks. Our kids are not in school, like, you know, all, except mine, mine is because we have, we go to a little private school on a farm. So it's pretty, it, it's pretty good. So Daniel, address briefings two times a day, check with investigations and special teams at least once a day, and I make sure to give them some information on um, the, the visits. I love it. How many of you do that? How many of you um, have that strategy where you, where you are discussing the results of these meetings um, or, or of activities that you're working on, right? Just Daniel? So the rest of you are writing this down as uh, got to, I got to do this, right? Karina, how about you? Are you saying, oh, yes, I got to do this. This is something I want to be part of. Well, I'm, I'm at home right now, but um, when I'm in, in the office, I do do that with my uh, detectives and my uh, crime in, impact team. I do brief with them and see if they, what the products that I produce to them and how the results were. Um, so I do that every day. So, <laughs> but when I'm in the office <laughs> and right now we're just kind of texting and just like emailing each other um, while I'm at home. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you do that. That's fantastic. Not a lot. Is that customary for your, for out in, in the West coast? Is it customary? Is it like more cultural that you folks are in roll call that you folks are in those environments? Right? Yes, it is. That's fantastic. So a lot of folks here in other parts of the country, especially mid part of the country, they're not allowed on ride alongs. Can you imagine that? They're not allowed at roll call. They're not allowed to, to go to detective meetings. They're not even allowed to go to comp meetings, which blows wow. me away. 
that is very uh, strange. <laughs> no, that's a, that's what prime rallies do here in the West Coast. We're really um, active in roll calls, and and um, you know we do presentations for all sorts of um, you know management to officers. Um, you know we're uh, also doing ride-alongs as well. But it's just kind of strange that that's not how it is in in the you said East Coast or or mid anywhere uh, anywhere <laughs> anywhere. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen I've seen Florida do somewhat of a good job with it. I've seen California do a good job. Um, I'm in Texas quite a bit, and they're kind of like, "You want me to do what with my analyst?" And I'm like, "Get your analyst out of the office. Get your analyst in a car." <laughs> so I, I did notice even when I was out there, you guys are much more in tuned with that piece of it. And so maybe the conversation today is really just reinforcing some of the great work that you already are doing. So so that's wonderful. Um, Shirley says, I add bulletins to the briefing book daily and will address in person if needed. I, this is music, music to my ears. So if someone else listens to this recording and they're not from California, they're going to be super jealous of all of you who get to be so connected with your, with your staff, right? Your, if your office, Shirley, is near the squad room so I can hear the chatter of the daily grind. I also actively listen to the radio traffic and view the CAD for details. So Shirley, I hope that that's the standard. It sounds like that's pretty standard out, out there in California. I have had to convince analysts to get a different office because <laughs> they're sitting in the chief's office. And I'm like, what are you doing in the chief's office? Or like me, when they put me in the narcotics office where you actually had to go into narcotics, which nobody did, and um, you know, and then go into me. And so they actually... They actually redid my door so that my door would open up to the main floor, right? So they sealed off the narcotics door and they opened up a, a main floor door for me, but it was still next to the chief's office. So nobody came. So I would like rat rattle candy every day. I'm like, oh, you want some candy? Come on up here, right? <laughs> it was pretty tricky. Oh, fantastic. Michael is embedded even better into investigations next to the narcotics office. So, but you're embedded. So that's, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. So if from nothing else from strategy five, if, if nothing else is happening right now, if nothing new is happening for you right now, what you should be recognizing is the fact that you guys do a great job with this, because this is not what we see throughout the country at all. In fact, I spend a lot of time talking to groups and convincing chiefs and convincing captains, like, civilians, because a lot of analysts are civilians, I spend time convincing them that civilians are not going to um, be an extra liability. So that's what we often hear is that civilians are not allowed in ride-alongs because they're a liability. So, um, so you guys are doing pretty good over here. I like it. I like it. All right. Great. So strategy number six, learn, um, you know, learn how to think and problem solve and think like a leader, give your gift. Okay. So let's see. Um, it's kind of like that movie Moneyball, right? Uh, where they have the baseball and analytics where you're just like, no, 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 he may not look like a valuable player, but he has talents and we want him. And they, they bring him on and they recruit him and that kind of thing. So, um, Lynchpin is another great book by Seth Godin. It really talks about contributing your best self. That was a book that one of the chiefs had recommended. But learn how to think like a problem solver and think like a leader um, and give your gift is, is pretty a, a challenge for some folks. Some um, folks get very small and mousy. They don't really feel like they have a lot of gifts to give or they don't recognize them quite well um, or, or quite yet, right? Um, or they think that the problem solving is not part of their job. Thinking like a leader in problem solving is your job, okay? So if you're not already thinking solutions on a regular basis, and I do feel like California does a, a good job of this, uh, but I'm going to say it anyway, just in case, you know, um, thinking about, um, you know, what solutions do you constantly bring to the table? Are you afraid to mention solutions or are you courageous about it? Are you someone who says, um, you know, here we have all this happening in the downtown area and here's a potential solution. Or do you just say, we have all this stuff going on in the downtown area, right? Is that it? How many of you provide solutions? Let me know. I'm, I'm curious now because you guys seem pretty progressive out there. But so I'm wondering how many of you know your skills and talents? How many of you are saying to yourself, 
you know, I, I really do give them solutions. I, I'm very specific. I say to them, you know, let's implement this and then they do it. Karina, is that pretty customary where you are? Um, it depends on, you know, which type of audience you're producing your product to. I mean, they not always take my recommendations or let's just say uh, if I do something for like our crime impact team, some most of the time they do, um, you know, well with that, but others, like if I do it for like, let's just say I, I send it to like patrol because you're working a detail on, um, on our Rodeo drive area, they might just be like, hmm, <laughs> we'll yeah. look somewhere. Well, well, they'll do it and some people don't <laughs> really pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. It just depends on the audience. Got it, got it. Like and I see- like Gain their trust kind of thing. Like you have to gain their trust before they kind of go with your recommendations. Yep, absolutely. Um, Ashley says provide solutions, but it's a hit or miss. Who accepts it? Abigail says sometimes we come up with great innovative ideas, but trying to convince them on how the idea can benefit them is also a challenge. Um, uh, Solera says I provide solutions and recommendations. So I want to take a step back for a second. This is not something I hear when I deliver these kind of presentations. <laughs> Here's what I hear when I say, what problems and solution, what, what solutions to problems do you give? An analyst typically says to me, oh no, I, I don't give them solutions. I only give them the data and then they decide what to do. Or who am I to give them solutions? Who am I to say what they should be doing? So the fact that you folks are even pushing some solutions out there is phenomenal, right? So pat yourself on your back again, right? You're doing another really good thing. You're offering solutions. So now let's go to the other side. Are they listening to the solutions? And you know, how can we get them to, to hear some of the solutions? And so, um, you know, the fact that they're accepting some of them is 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 remarkable, right? And so what I, one of the things I'd be curious about is why they didn't accept the other one, right? Is there something missing from your analysis that they think would have skewed, you know, how they should be developing a strategy, right? And so maybe having some conversations with them around. Um, I noticed that you guys did this. What was it? What was it about this particular recommendation or product that um, that was missing, like, or or that could have been more efficient, or could have been a better strategy? What strategy did you end up using? That kind of thing, um, because it it really is um, remarkable that that you guys are saying solutions. It really is remarkable that they're accepting some solutions. So now you're just kind of like narrowing it in and saying, why not these solutions? You might have been missing something, and, and it could really build on your knowledge base to produce a, a different recommendation in the future. Yeah, okay. All right, let's see. So here's an example of um, a problem solver and I have her little story here. So this is Jen Zobel, she's, she's part of our um, um, Rising Genius program, which I'll, I'll share with you in a little bit. Uh, she was newer to her police agency, uh, and so, several of you have seen this already. She she posted this over on the Tribe of Excellence page, or we posted it for her. Um, but she was really struggling with gaining buy-in. She was an analyst who was coming into a police agency who, that already had analysts, and um, and those analysts were straight stats people, so they didn't have a lot of interaction with. Um, anyone other than supervisors, right? So they didn't have a lot of interaction with detectives or patrol. It was kind of just a, like a numbers team. And she didn't come from that environment. She came from an analytical environment. And so she said, um, you know, how can I create uh, buy-in within with my peers, right? And so, um, so they, she decided, uh, she saw, she looked over and she works in detectives. She looked over and she saw that her detectives were manually doing a lot of stuff, right? And so she decided to have a sit, sit down meeting with them and say, hey, you guys know that I have access to all this data. You don't have to manually do this stuff, right? And they're just like, well, don't analysts just do statistics? And she's like, no, we do more than just statistics. And she had a conversation with them. So she actually sat with them right, um, to develop this feedback loop, loop. She sat with them and she said, if I were to develop your dream, you know, reports every week, what would they look like for you? You know, what do you currently do right now that, you, that you're really tired of doing that would free up some time for you so that you could go do the work that you need to do? 
And so she had these two avatars who she worked with one-on-one -on -one and said, can I kind of like throw a few ideas at you and, um, you know, and so forth. And so between herself and these two detectives, she was able to really narrow down what they needed right? Which was relatively e easy. They just needed an export from their system, but they'd never had that before. All they had was stats, right? So she asked some good questions and she, you know, she decided, hey, if this is what you guys need, then, then let me do that for you, right? And then during her lunches, she went to the gym. And so she would see some, pe pe some of the people down there working out. And so she'd have like a conversation with them about their families and that kind of thing, continuing that buy-in, right? Continuing that, that buy-in. And then she set up a follow-up meeting, right? A standing follow-up meeting until her project for them was done, um, which was every Tuesday, she would meet with them and say, okay, here's what I have so far. Is this what you're looking for? And then, she, no, we want, oh, wow, you can do all that. Let's do these three more things. So she'd go back and she'd do the three more things and she'd come back and say, all right, is this what you're looking for? And they got really excited because they were involved in the design of it, right? Um, so she recruited the two detectives to be her guinea pigs and to start being her story tellers. And so, um, you know, she recommends, and with her success, she recommends getting to know your officers on a personal level if you can, right? Uh, I'm not talking about going drunk, getting drunk and drinking a bunch of beers and being all crazy. I'm talking about in a constructive, solid way. Think about it right now. Do you know how, do you know, how, like, like what's important to the captain that you work with? Do you know what's important? Do you know if they're they're married, if they have children, if they're going through some medical challenges? Do you, what do you know about people where you're working? Um, this is a big cultural difference, I think, between um, West Coast folks and Southern and Northern. Northern folks up here, the less we know, the better, right? We're like, we don't want to know about you. We want to be detached. We just want to do our work and get it done, right? Southern, it's like almost a lot, right? They're just like, oh, come on, let's let's chat. Let's do all this. <laughs> let's have a good time. And then how are you guys over in California? Do you think that you do a good job of getting to know people so that you can have conversations that are more than just work at your agency? Is that you? Let, let me know how that works for you. It, it always intrigues me how this is throughout the different parts of the country. So go ahead and let me know in the chat, is this something easy for you? Do you only communicate with your people uh, in police ways, right? Or do you find other opportunities? Do you see people at lunch and try to get to know them a little bit better, creating that, that buy-in? Do you, do you see a problem that may not be your responsibility, but you say, hey, let's meet until we figure out this problem together, right? Is that any of you? You guys are pretty quiet, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Is that you? Holly says, yes, our chief is all about treating the team like a family. Yeah, he must have read the book called Culture Code. <laughs> he often takes time to reach out to us and know what we're doing in our personal lives as well. Abigail says, some stations do that, some don't. I think it's the environment that really determines that. And Holly says, it's great. Yeah, it makes a difference. When you, feel, when you send these little messages, and I'm not saying spend hours doing this. I'm saying there's opportunity for you to spend a little bit of time um, doing this, right? You send these small messages. This is a safe environment. You can trust me. You send these small messages that are consistent, small, but consistent, right? You can trust me, right? So Daniel says, join the station. I love it. I love it. I love it, Dan Daniel. He joined the station softball team and you go fishing with the group. You got it. You got it. Daniel, you got it. Um, Carrie says pre-COVID was easier. We are all forced <laughs> forced to work apart. And I think when no things normal out, we'll find that groove again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Claudia says, I make sure to go, um, try to go on uh, to coffee or lunch and see that I'm at the gym. You got, yeah, you guys got it figured out in the, in the, in, in California. You guys got it figured out. And for those of you who are like, that's not me. <laughs> for those of you who are like, yeah, that's the three people that responded, but that's not me, right? Um, it's okay. It's okay. I want you to think small messages, small signals that you can send that shows that you care than just more uh, that you care more than just about the work itself, right? Right? You care. See a picture um, of a family member, right? 
So Jen Zobel did a great job of this. Um, Julie says, yes, we do potluck lunches. And now um, you check in via text. Awesome. Awesome. Abigail, um, you encourage and plan holiday events in the office. That's great. I love it. I love it. Because when you do operate like a family, it's different. It's different, right? So so Jen, this outsider, came in and she, you know, she built this kind of like from the ground up, you know, hey, I need your input because I want to serve you, right? I need your input because I want to serve you. All right. That's another good one. All right, here we go. Strategy number seven, um, decide what your brand will be as an analyst, right? Decide what your brand is going to be. And that's kind of along the same lines of the vision piece. Decide what you wanna represent. What's your brand, right? Join an analyst group as a leader. If you wanna be a professional at your agency, then act the part, right? <laughs> I've worked with analysts who, <laughs> bunnies, we called them. I'm sure you might have them out there, right? Where, you know, analysts, they just want to like get to get in, get in with police. And so um, sometimes they just inappropriate, right? They're just inappropriate. And they just kind of go across the line a little bit. If you want to be treated like a professional, you act like a professional, right? That kind of thing. So part of part of branding yourself is deciding who you want to be in your agency. You are the subject matter expert, whether you like it or not, you are it. You are the, yes, you, you are the subject matter expert at your agency. You study the data, you know the data, you're in the data, that's you, right? So now that we know this about you, how are you going to brand that, right? You're going to join groups and become a leader. You're going to become that volunteer at some regional group. You're going to position yourself for industry influence, right? So, so Karina, she, what, what's your title here, Karina, in this group, um, um, I'm currently a, a webmaster for the state board, and I'm also a liaison between our state uh, state board and our uh, regional association, which is the Southern California Crime Analyst Intelligence Association. Awesome. <laughs> so I awesome. have a dual, dual capacity here. <laughs> Yeah. So you're branding yourself as an industry leader. You're branding yourself as somebody who, who helps other analysts, who coordinates these sessions, who I'm sure does a hundred thousand other things, right? Um, you're branding yourself as somebody that your agency can trust because you're one of the big wigs, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> And so the question for the rest of you folks is, how are you branding yourself as a leader? Now, maybe Karina took the only position available, right? So maybe there's no more positions available. Let's just say that's true. You can position yourself in other ways. You can be the trainer. When I heard, um, you know, I'm so thankful, so thankful to be part of your training series um, that, that you guys have going on. But recognize that you have experts exactly where you are. Have you stepped up to the plate and said, Dana, I want to teach a course, right, to our group? Have you stepped up to the plate and said, you know what, um, this is something that I do really well, and I want to share it with other people? right? So thinking about how you can become that influencer. Have you developed a rock star presentation for your new recruits and shared that with your regional teams, right? To say, guys, don't reinvent the wheel. You could take mine, right? So thinking about how you can step up to the plate, how you can brand yourself as an industry leader. Have you volunteered for IACA? Have you, um, you know, what have you done? What, what have you done to really brand yourself as a professional? Position yourself for future success, right? I don't know. In the chat, let me know. Let me know what you've done. Maybe there's some things that, that I haven't thought of before um, that, that we can all do. Have you written any white papers or materials? Have you submitted have you submitted your amazing bulletins and ideas to the IACA bulletin contests, right? Have you nominated another analyst? We have a Rise in Analyst um, program over in the Tribe of Excellence community where we rise in analyst. We say, this analyst impacted me. And we rise, that's, that is branding yourself as a leader, okay? Um, what about the rest of you? Let me know. What are you doing right now to brand yourself as, a, as an industry influencer? That might be a tricky one. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Um, who are the volunteers here? Who are the people who volunteer for some of the boards out in California? I think we have a few. Uh, oh, I see someone. Uh, um, uh, Shirley Patty's from the social media team. Yep. 
that's great. So Shirley, you assist the PIO. This was designed originally to have another body to help in an emergency. Now you do 95% of all the posts um, and more investigation in social media due to active protests. Okay, okay. And what about the mentor program, right? Are any of you mentors in the IACA program? You guys are talented. I'm telling you, all the things that I've talked about, people don't do this. They just don't. And so the fact that you're like, yeah, we already do that kind of stuff, right? At least most of it. You have the opportunity to be a leader. You have the opportunity to mentor somebody else, right? Raquel, you're the treasurer for CCIAA and state rep for your regional association. Fantastic. Abigail, you incorporated yourself as a trainer for our in-house database and will be presenting associations on some skills and your new position. Awesome. Abigail, the VP of membership in SCCIAA. So let me ask you, you CCIAA and SCCIAA people and all your CCCs and I's, I's, I's. Um, I'm part of the same board, just so you know. So we're the Southern California and that covers LA County, Ventura County and Orange County. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So yeah. I know her. <laughs> yes. So let me ask you, are you like starving for people to help you out at this point? Yeah, we actually, um, I think we, I think we're good for now, but um, I mean, I think when, when we, we were supposed to be doing our conference, you know, yeah. but with the COVID thing, um, we kind of postponed it for the, I think 2022. Got it. 2022. 2022. <laughs> so. Got it. Got it. Yep. Um, Daniel says he trains interns and new analysts. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So decide what your brand is as an analyst. And this is what chiefs were looking for. So I will tell you that chiefs will call me up. I had a chief call me a few weeks ago. He's like, Dawn, you know, um, you know, all that analyst community. Is there someone that you can recommend? I'm looking for a new analyst. And so, you know, and yes. So I recommend it and, and she's getting the job, you know? And so, when you come from a place of service, you are seen as a service-minded individual, right? And it doesn't die there, right? It really doesn't die there, okay? All right. All right, so here we go here. Strategy, oh, something happened. Here we go. Um, strategy number eight. Just going to move the chat to the other side. Understand your community. So it's important for you as the analyst, right? Whether you're a research analyst, an intel analyst, whatever kind of analyst you are, it's important for you to have an understanding of your city, your town, the future planning of it, right? Um, whether it, there's residential or commercial growth that's going to be occurring in your community. Do you know any plans for future big box um, businesses that are coming to the area, right? That might attract some shoplifters, that kind of thing. And so um, the question really becomes, you know, what do you know outside of your police department? Do you know of any, you know, motels that are going out of business or coming into town? Do you know of any schools that are being built? How do you keep track of what's going on in your community? Do you go to your manager meetings, your city manager, or whatever they call them out there for you folks? Are you involved? Do you know? Do you know the changes in laws that are coming up, like how domestic violence laws changed, um, marijuana laws changed for you folks, right? Is it legal out there now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, you know, so do you know that? Do you know the date that it became legal? Do you know the date that it became legal? And have you incorporated that into your analytics to look at whether drug um, crimes have gone up or down, right? Those, so, so how much do you know about your community? So um, Ashley says mentor, oh good Ashley, you're a mentor in the IACA program. Uh, you are the IACA mentoring committee, yes. Um, and I think you're uh, the new person, you took over Mindy's position, right? Because Mindy was there for quite some time or maybe you work with her. You're teaching a post course, all right, at Cal State Long Beach. And our unit has a robust internship program and direct connections with the schools. You are setting yourself up as an industry leader. Fantastic, fantastic. And you don't have to do everything that Ashley is doing, right? I mean, let's face it, you're busy. <laughs> but think about how can I be of value, right? How can I be of value? So strategy eight talks about understanding your community. What kind of processes do you have in place right now where you are actively understanding your community? 
right? Social media is your main gate to your community activities and events. I also watch any important community leader panels. Awesome, Abigail. Do you know events that are coming into your community? Do you know political environments in your community? What do you know? Ashley says there are five of us now in the committee right now. Mindy and Jason have left. Okay, got it, got it. Well, first of all, thank you for volunteering. I know that that's a um, endless, <laughs> endless job, right? All the volunteer work that you folks do. So in all of the networks that you're involved in. So thank you. So Daniel gets reports from the cities every week. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have Google alerts set up that um, alert you to whenever your chief's name is, is mentioned? Does anyone have that? I uh, know, I just Google it. <laughs> you just Google it, right? <laughs> yeah. Holly says, yes, she gets it sent right to her email so that whenever her chief's name is mentioned, it goes right to her email and she knows. Well, I always hear from someone anyway, so it's not you like- You hear it from someone? <laughs> On um, the in news, I'll just hear from someone. <laughs> yes. Shirley says marijuana dispensaries are in the process of opening in the city limits. Recreational use should be an interesting change in the city. Yes, Google alerts for the chief as well. You got like, did you need me today? You guys got it going on. You guys got it going on. <laughs> you guys know what you're doing out here. Look at this. This is great. My hope is there's a couple of ideas that you're getting from, from this. My hope is as well um, that if this is not you, if this is just a handful of people and you're like, oh, I don't do that, that you're also writing down some ideas because um, I think that they're important. They're important. All right. So here's a really good one. Strategy nine, your chiefs are and staff are your customers. Don't wait for them to tell you what they want show them something they didn't know. Um, so um, uh, it was interesting because the chiefs mentioned this one to me and they said, Don, I am so sick of my analysts asking me, what do I want? You know, <laughs> and they're like, can't they just tell me what I want? I'm like, no chief, they don't read minds. But in reality, we should be anticipating what our chief wants to know, right? What our officers need to know. Um, you know, kind of like, um, you know, like thinking about um, the different things that, that that chief is going to be concerned about, right? So for instance, do you have threshold analyses set up at your agency, right? So that you're looking at maybe crime over the course of several years. Do you have something that alerts you to the threshold, a, a specific crime category being above that threshold or below that threshold where you can like this, say to your chief, hey chief, this met the threshold in my automated threshold report and the reason for the increase in burglary is because of these five series and Joey getting out of jail, right? And Joey getting out of jail, this is his MO. Like, are you delivering that to your chief on a regular basis? And is anyone doing that? Let me know if that's happening where you have these thresholds set up that alert you to when something's going on, right? In your community, you dig into it and you kick it off to your chief. Um, maybe on a weekly basis. Chief, here, here's the activity you need to know about, right? Abigail says um, she appreciates webinars like this to reaffirm your skills and ideas. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that sometimes that confidence piece, like knowing that you're doing the right thing, um, you know, knowing that, that you are doing all the stuff that you should be doing is key. Yeah. I think sometimes we just need to know it. We just need to hear it, right? We just need to hear it. So how many of you do have those thresholds set up? How many of you, Daniel, Holly, Shirley, Abigail, Julie, Julie uses um, a threshold access database to create a report. So, you know, especially when being pulled in so many directions, I love it. So that means Julie, that you know how to automate that process. If you're using Microsoft access to do it, fantastic. You do that on a monthly basis, Jessica. Yeah. Um, I would recommend doing it a couple times a week for yourself to know um, you know, what's going up and down, like it's a button press. If you have it set up in access, it's a button press, right? And so it tells you what's up, what's down, what met the threshold, the Z-score, the normal range, right? So you know to look into it. And then once a month you can present it, but um, knowing it every day, knowing it every couple of days, it would be key. Um, Raquel says she's starting to implement them. Fantastic. Yes, Julie Automation is the best thing ever. We actually... Um, uh, through IATALYST. We just got a grant through NHTSA, 
<laughs> um, to fund an automation series because part of what I see is analysts don't know how to automate. And so um, we've been doing a lot of work one-on-one -on -one with folks in automation, but we really want to create a bigger platform. And so we just got funded to do that, which is really exciting. So that'll be coming out in October. I can't wait. Patty, um, um, let's see, uh, let's see, Shirley rather, says, I need to learn how to automate. Okay, good, point me in the right direction. So hopefully that helps. Um, you can, I'm gonna give you some resources after this and you can follow some stuff that's already out, right? I'm happy to share that with you. And then that new automation series, it's 100% free and it's, going, it's coming out to everybody. So that'll be good for you, Shirley, and for the other folks who are looking um, to automate some strategies. In fact, we have our Peak Productivity Master Course going on this week where we're talking about time management and efficiencies over in our Tribe of Excellence group. And one of the things that we are talking about on Friday and also on Saturday is automation. And we're listing out a bunch of automation strategies that analysts um, should know because they just make your life better. <laughs> so you can join us over there and learn about that too if, you, if you're looking for something more right away. Diana, you're starting to implement Threshold and have received positive feedback. Awesome. Hopefully with some narrative in there regarding what, why something is up or down. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. Great job, Diana. Um, oh, great. Asad, I will tell you how you can join the tribe. I have a link for you guys here. Uh, it's going to be very helpful. We have one more strategy and then I'm going to kick out a bunch of resources for you. Sound good? All right. Yep. Yeah. So strategy number 10, think like a leader, right? Think like a leader, really be persistent, continue to produce those quality products, have conversations about their utility. This is what I want you to take away from this strategy is focus on the why, right? Shift your approach from the what, which is your bulletins, your reports, your products, shift from the what and ask yourself why. right? Why am I conducting this analysis and is it of any value? And how do I get to know that better, right? Focus on that why, be persistent, identify the goals of the agency and make sure they align with your goals as a unit. So what are, does everyone know the strategic goals of their agency, right? Do you all know what percentage you wanna reduce crime by or crashes by or anything like that? All right, does anyone know what it is in their agency? So, so if, if you're not aware of what the agency goals are, how do you know you're supporting them, right? So going back to say, what are the goals of our agency? Do we even have any, right? Do we have a goal? Did someone make up a goal, right? And how can I be part of that decision-making? And then am I contributing to that? Am I purposeful? And am, am I results focused? Am I contributing to that goal? And if your agency does not have a goal, I've, I have not heard of an agency, maybe 75% maybe of them to 85 have them. Um, so you wanna take a look, take a look and see what your agency goals are relative to data-driven strategies and to crime reduction and crash reduction and so forth. So Daniel says, my station captain provides them. Awesome, awesome. So thinking like a leader, um, you know, really just, it involves you thinking about the positive. So if you find that you're not well received, the question is, what can you do about it, right? And finding solutions, finding relationships to build, finding solutions, uh, solutions and partnerships, okay? So thinking like a leader. We actually have, I know that the conversation around thinking like a leader could probably be a two-hour conversation because there are so many facets. What makes a good leader? How do I think like a leader? What happens when things don't go my way? How can I be more positive? How can I find solutions? Where do I go? Like all this stuff. Um, and I get that. I get that. I'm going to give you some resources in a few minutes, but I want you to be always saying to yourself, how can I step up as a leader? How can I think positively? How can I think like a CEO? How can I think, you know, if you don't know what a CEO thinks like, then go Google, what does the CEO think, you know, and how do they think and how do they process, right? Always be thinking like a leader because you are, you are the CEO of crime analysis at your agency. And the sooner you recognize that, like I said earlier, the better off you will be, right? Uh, you will be that leader for your agency. Okay. Abigail says, I try to let others know how much I appreciate their time and let other analysts know around me that their work is greatly, uh, is great and beneficial. I try to encourage them. Fantastic. That's a great way to be a leader. Awesome. Yeah, because you don't even have to have the title of supervisor. You can still be a leader, 
um, by doing exactly that, rising others. So there's lots of things you can do to think like a leader. You can you can start your day with gratitude, right? You can rise others like Abigail is doing. You can step into leadership in some of the networking volunteer opportunities. You can offer solutions to your detectives even if they don't ask. You can always be thinking, how can I create results? That's the key word. How can I create results? And if you're working on something and you don't know how it's going to create results, then stop working on it <laughs> and do and move yourself into something that's going to give you results and give other people the opportunity for results. All right. So those are the 10 strategies. Um, now I'm going to give you some resources that you can pop on into. Any questions before we move on to the resources? Any thoughts on the 10 strategies? Any, uh, maybe, maybe you're thinking I've done a really good job and I'm proud of myself. Maybe you're thinking, oh, I got a couple I want to touch up on. What are you thinking right now before we close this out with some of the resources available to you? Ali says, do you have any tips on increasing influence and creating buy-in when primar primarily working from home and having limited interaction with staff? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that there's opportunities for you, Holly, and for others, even when working from home, it is more challenging, but I think there are solutions. One solution is you can identify three people in your agency that you want to connect with on a regular basis. And then you can say, okay, be purposeful, right? Like maybe I want to connect with the captain in charge of detectives. Maybe I want to connect with officer so-and-so because he's my avatar. Maybe I want to connect with whoever, right? Maybe you have, set, you set up virtual coffees with them, right? Um, you set up some I idea playing brainstorming time for a project that you want to work on with them. Maybe um, if you want to, it depends, I guess, on who you're trying to build the relationship with. Maybe that can help a little bit, right? Um, thinking about, you know, hey, I'm delivering this bulletin. Can I go on virtual recall, uh, roll call with you? You guys have TVs in your roll call? Are any of you on virtual roll call right now? No. Do you, but I'm sure you have, T. I mean, it's California. You have TVs in roll call, right? Yeah, we do. I do. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes, you do. You do, right? It is. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, imagine, here's an idea. Imagine um, you if you were able to virtually connect like in a Zoom or something like that, you could do that. If, if that's not an immediate uh, reality, maybe you download your own free version of Zoom and you record yourself delivering the roll call and you submit it to your IT staff to have it rolling in roll call, right? So your, your face is still, still seen, that piece is still there. Um, so there's a couple, of, maybe that was, is that helpful? So Holly, it really depends. Can you help me understand who you're trying to connect with? Because if it's the officers, it's gonna be, I mean, it's different, right? It's different for sure. Um, if it's the command staff, it's different. But, but I would consider some, you know, being involved in these virtual meetings uh, live, like, like virtually like this, like, hey, so right now I can't see you. So we're not truly connecting, right? Cause I can't see your face, but Karina, I'm gonna remember her face from, from forever, right? Uh, and she's gonna remember mine. Maybe, not, maybe when I put my hair down, you might not recognize me. I don't know, I don't know. But we'll know each other from now on because she'll, she'll be like, that's that lady who talks really fast. <laughs> that that north northeastern girl that talks really fast so when you design these zoom calls with folks or these video chats or whatever it is you know make sure they have a camera ask them if they have a camera figure out how you can be the solution how have you guys done it so far there's 30 plus of you um who who attended here today how many what have you done so far to connect with folks what are some good ideas that you have all right um they are discussing adding it. Okay, so Michael, they, they're adding it. Good, I'm so glad you've heard some great tips and tricks that you can apply immediately. Okay, everyone, right now, what is one thing that you are, so, so those of you who've never taken a training with me, you might not know this part, but I always at the end, toward the end of every training, I believe in action. If you have not, if you have sat here for two hours and you walk away and don't take, take action, then my job, I was pitiful. I was pitiful, right? So in order for, for me to know that this is a success for you, I need you to take action, right? And so my question to you is, what's one action step? And we'll wait here for everyone to respond. What's one action step that you can take right now right? Right now, that, that makes today worth it. That makes these two hours worth it for you. 
right? Daily conference calls about our day, all right? Daily conference calls for some of you. What else? Let me know in the chat here. What have you, what have you gathered? We, we went through a bunch of tips. We went through um, think like a leader, branding yourself, understanding your community, uh, grabbing a couple of advocates, um, knowing your vision, right? Talking chief talk, nurture your traits, don't hide in your office, right? So Michael says attend briefings and get my face out into the department. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I know there's more than three of you. Come on, what action steps are y'all gonna take? What are you gonna take? Corina, what jumps out for you? What, what jumps out for you? Well, definitely when I get back, I'm not hiding in my office and try to be more proactive and kind of, you know, try to do more briefings with the, uh, maybe get in get maybe get like more uh, connection with the uh, newer officers. I think that's where I'm kind of lacking where there's a lot of new officers coming in and I really want to connect with them in some way where they can understand and also um, give me feedback on the products I'm sending them out. I love it. I love it. Perfect. Um, I had one analyst, um, her action step, so they had some data quality challenges and she was really wanting to make some improvements, but also build buy-in and relationships. And so she set it up. So anytime anyone was promoted to Sergeant, who's the level that reads her reports, um, she had a one-on-one -on -one with them, you know, and she showed them what crime analysis is and how it's gonna help them and so forth. Um, I've had other analysts make little cards that indicate what I do as an analyst right? Because they, sometimes they don't know. They're just like, oh, what, what should I be doing? Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, so making a little laminated card that you can give out in roll call, you know, maybe even put your picture on there. Here's what I do. Um, did you know? This is me. <laughs> this is me. Yep. Let's see. We have a few over here that I'll love to read. Um, let's see. Jessica says, be more focused on my vision and creating that vision. Yes, exactly. Julie says, get better at talking chief talk. <laughs> yes, yes. Daniel says, create a new updated vision. The current one is 15 years old. Holy cow, that's an old vision. Yes, I like it. Um, Carrie says, strengthen my relationships in my, uh, with my advocates so that I can gain trust and be more included. Yes, Abigail, I wanna to try to connect with the deputies in a virtual setting and be confident in my capabilities um, by offering more innovative solutions. Fantastic. Um, Dalen says, be proactive and offer help with cases before they ask for it. Yes. Holly says, use the camera more often during the virtual calls. Yes. <laughs> be more bold with offering solutions. I love it. I love it. Erin says, culture coach, she's going to read some books, connect with new officers, stop putting out useless reports. Oh yeah, Erin, I like it. I like what you're, where you're going. Shirley says, I have a new command staff, um, new command staff changes for the opportunity to sell myself again. I love it. Review my current products and make some changes. And maybe even you, Shirley, getting together a list of what I do. Hey, you don't know me. Here's what I do. I help, I provide you suspects. I identify patterns and trends. I tell you where the hotspots are. I save you money and time, right? That kind of stuff. Aside, I will work with our analyst leadership team to create more clear vision of our unit so that the analysts understand the why. Oh, there is something about connecting the why to the what that makes so much sense, right? Start with why, Simon Sinek, great book. So. I meant a lot of you are talking about structural changes. A lot of you are talking about um, creating the vision, creating confidence. The Tribe of Excellence Facebook community that you see here right now, we actually have a different cover this week only um, because we are in the middle of our peak productivity master course. So it'll give you a schedule. So if you if you type in Tribe of Excellence, it might look a little different than, than this one here. Um, but you can join us over on Facebook. We do ask two questions and, and I'm happy to send you the link, but it's, it, you can either look me up Don Reby and you can find it right there uh, under Tribe of Excellence, or you can just Google Tribe of Excellence. Hopefully, hopefully it comes up. <laughs> um, but I, I think Diana and several of you, um, um, Ashley are already members so, so they can share the link as well. 
And so, you know, there's some units that are very relative to what you're talking about right now. Um, there's a whole summer series that talks about that infrastructure. We have a one hour video on creating vision. So if that's something that you're looking to really do, you can go ahead and take a look at that. We have a whole unit dedicated to building confidence and creating buy-in. So you can, you can, you know, expand yourself on that. Um, you know, so so there's a couple different tools over in the Tribe of Excellence community for you. I will say um, we do ask you to fill out two questions. We ask you to fill out, um, you know, kind of a, a little personal question to make sure you're human. And then also your email address. So what we try to do is we try to weed out vendors so that the analysts who are there aren't getting bombarded with different vendors reaching out to them. So make sure you answer those questions. Diana says the Tribe of Excellence group is fantastic. I definitely definitely recommend joining. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. We go live every Thursday at 2 PM Eastern, which I think is 11 o'clock your time on a new topic. So in about nine minutes, I'll be going live over there <laughs> um, on thriving during this time of change. So each week we have a new topic. So we're going to be moving into our automation and that kind of thing next month. Culture code, you've had great strategies that are things we've talked about in the unit, but implementation of several haven't happened yet. I think this training has been great in validating a lot of areas. I need a constant reminder of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the tribe does offer that constant reminder. And for you remote people, we actually have um, what's called analyst pods and we meet, which is kind of early for you, but we meet at 10 o'clock Eastern um, virtually on, on Wednesdays and Fridays with a bunch of analysts from around the country to execute what's called the Pomodoro style. So we come to the table with something that we want to achieve. And then we, you know, share what that's going to be. We put ourselves in silence and then we rock it out. So it's, it's really a nice tool that people who are working from home use to stay super focused and kind of get some ideas from other parts of, of the, the country. So it's nice. And all of it's free. So Tribe of Excellence is a great resource for you. Another wonderful resource is the Rising Genius Program. I know that we talked a teeny bit about it. Um, you know, some of the folks who've gone through it if, if the gaining clarity piece is, if the vision piece is, is really big to you, here is a place where you can go. Um, this is a, a six month coaching program where we dive into the genius actually stands for something right there. And so we dive into gaining clarity on your purpose, right? So we have a whole set of modules that you walk through that give you the clarity that you're looking for, not only in your career, but in your home life too, right? It's that work-life integration piece, that leadership of self piece that we really stress. We talk about what skills, access, open database connection, Excel, mapping, blah, 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 that analysts should know. So we measure some competencies for you and we identify any gaps in those competencies to give you opportunities for um, strategically de designing your professional development roadmap, right? So you're not just developing any road, you're not just grabbing training here and there, you're really intentional and focused with the training you're on, training path you're on. So we do that um, in one of the modules. We also focus a lot, a lot, a lot on nurturing partnerships and achieving influence, specific action steps on how to get there, how to do that, um, not only in your work life, but potentially in your home life too. Installing synergy and productivity habits. So that's really about cutting the fat, eliminating the stuff that doesn't matter, getting ultra focused on what does, setting goals, setting priority, priorities, and really looking at where do I want to be in six months, in 12 months, right? And how do I get there? So we focus a lot on, you know, how do we create those efficiencies, those time management skills? What do we do to make some improvements there? We have a unit all dedicated to self-confidence and, and, and um, self-care. This is an area in analytics. We we dismiss. I see a lot of analysts eating th through lunch or not taking breaks, um, getting burnt out. So we focus a lot on how do we build your confidence, right? And how do we get you to the next level where you are maximizing that self-care piece to really become more productive and more efficient, right? We talk about stepping into leadership. So a lot of folks who are supervisors or who are moving into leadership or want to move into leadership are attracted to this program because it is a leadership program. It helps them build their leadership skills. Uh, and so, so we're very proud of the folks who do go through this program and who walk out and, and they end up in leadership roles. So we're excited about that. And then the last S there, the last piece of this is um, a power planning matrix where all of the things that we talk about, we put, we package it in a plan for you. 
um, that we walk through. And so each, uh, twice a month, you chat with us, we chat with you one-on-one, -on -one, just like this, like you see my face, but I see yours too. And we talk about where you are and how you are moving to the next level um, of your own growth. And so we've had a lot of folks who've had such great success in this, um, we have a, a ton of testimonials. If this is something that you're interested in exploring, we, I'm happy to talk on the phone with you to see if it's something that fits, is the right timing and is the right kind of program for you, right? Six months, uh, we, we're moving into a 12 month program, but right now it's a six month program. Uh, and it's a ton of fun. I have a ton of fun doing it. We, we really eliminate a lot of the learning curve that analysts go through in, in their career. We're working with a lot of people who want to leave a good legacy, right? Uh, and so, so building that infrastructure and that piece is, is key. And so I kind of just described the program for you, but here it, it is. We have models. We have a library of a ton of trainings on automation, access, Excel. Um, you know, mapping everything under the sun, all kinds of fun stuff. We have weekly trainings that you're a part of. Um, you can come every week and learn a brand new skill. Uh, we have access to any new training that we develop within the, the time period that you're with us. You get access to all of it. And of course, you get that one on one coaching, which is the changing factor for a lot of people the accountability, the movement into success, the customized plan. Um, so, so that's a little bit more definition about the actual program itself. So here's one of our superstars, Rhea uh, from Florida. She participated in the program um, a couple of years ago. And she says after a couple of weeks, uh, she was simply, you know, singing a different tune. It really helped her feel so much more in control of her career. She didn't feel stuck anymore. She's one of our greatest uh, success stories. I always love sharing her story. If you want to hear it from her mouth, it's actually in our Tribe of Excellence page and it's on our Excellence and Analytics website. So you can view it there as well. Um, here's Caitlin, just another graduate of the program. You know, she has a great success story. She was trying to find a job in analytics and, and just simply could not find a job. And she, we worked on shifting her mindset, creating a vision for her. And she ended up within three weeks, she got, um, you know, she got an application or, or offers for two different jobs. One of them turned out to be her dream job, which was really nice. So we worked on her resume. We worked on her mindset. We worked on who she was applying to, her vision and all those things. And she has seen great success. Carrie um, was miserable at her job. <laughs> Poor thing. And I only say this because she's public with it. She was miserable at her job and she was not valued at her agency. They did not have law enforcement buy-in and she did not have the courage to leave. Um, and so she, we worked together and we really built her confidence and helped her realize how skilled she really was. So she found a new job and within a week she was in the newspaper with her job about how fabulous she was and she ended up using words that she never thought she would use before which was confident and proud so we're really proud of her um, and her success okay so what can you do this point forward so wh what do you actually do you you received 10 skills 10 tips today so you can really spend some time reflecting i mean really digging and reflecting on those skills that we talked about today, dig deep and see, is there an area for growth for yourself, right? So that's one thing you can do, all right? Um, so then the other thing you can do is if you're kind of thinking about that, that Rising Genius program, you, you're thinking, I need someone to walk me through this, to handhold me, to help me with my team, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly and we can just chat and see if it's right for you. For some folks, it's absolutely right. And for some folks, it's not, but it's worth the phone call to figure out if it's right for you. And then of course, everybody here, be, feel free to join our Facebook community. Um, I, I don't know if we can, maybe, I, I don't know if I can put that in the chat. Let me see. I might be able to put that in the chat for you. Oh, it doesn't look like it. Um, but basically, um, maybe maybe D Diana or Ashley or one of you folks at this point um, can throw it in the chat or send it out afterwards. But the Facebook group that is called Tribe of Excellence and it's uh, free and you can pop into it at any time um, in, in, in there's tons of training in there and, and it's really, really wonderful. So. so that is the end of today's session, the secrets to gaining a buy-in and uh, gaining influence and creating buy-in at your agency. Are there any, oh, thank you, Diana. I appreciate that. So you just click on it and you're off, right? Just click on it and you're off. All right. So are there any questions or comments or anything that you need clarified before we pop off today?
I will say on the tribe this week, it's very busy because we're doing our peak productivity master course. It's not too late to do it. It's 100% free. Um, and basically it is diving into time management strategies. And so everything can be found in unit one that we've done already. Uh, we go live every um, day at 7 p.m. Eastern which is four o'clock your time to talk about a different strategy. And today we're talking about time chunking. So you're welcome to join us for those. And if you want the workbook that comes with the program, just go to unit one and you can get all the materials you need. Okay. All right, Karina, it doesn't look like there's any questions. You guys have been phenomenal. This was a ton of fun. I hope it was of value for you. It definitely was fun for me. Uh, yes, you are so welcome, Ashley and Shirley and Daniel. Um, Jessica, Elvia, Julie, thank you guys so much. You guys are, are really just a wonderful group of people, very proactive in the world of law enforcement analytics. It's a pleasure of mine to be here with you. All right. I'm glad I'm glad that everyone was able to um, interact in some way or form. <laughs> Me too. So um, thank you for everyone joining us. And um, next month we'll have another uh, monthly meeting. So uh, you have a good one. And uh, I'm going to get head out of here.